Hey everybody, my name is Curtis and welcome to another backyard bird feeding video. Today we're going to be showing you how to start feeding the birds in your own backyard. Now, some people just go to the hardware store and buy a generic feeder and some generic songbird mix, but before you start feeding the birds in your yard, you should really understand what birds that you have in your area and the types of foods that they prefer. Now today I'm going to show you how to find that out and the best steps to take before setting up your bird feeding station. Now there's two really good methods to find out what type of birds you have in your neighborhood and their preferred foods. I'm going to show you both methods here and we're going to start out with the tray method. Now the first step of the tray method is to either make or buy a tray. This can be very simple. It can be a couple 2x4s glued together or a really elaborate tray. All you need is a flat tray surface that you can put out in your yard in a visible location for the birds to find and land on safely. Once your tray is in place, the next step is to offer the five most popular foods to the birds. Now the five foods that you want to offer on your tray are black oil sunflower seed, white proso millet, peanuts, suets or fats, and fruits. Black oil sunflower seeds are the most popular feeding option for most bird feeders and for most birds. They're easily cracked into by most seed eating birds and they are high in calories and high in fat. They're a great overall option to feed the birds in your backyard. White proso millet is a great option for your bird feeding station as it will attract ground feeding birds such as juncos, doves, and other sparrows. It mimics weeds and weed seeds and other natural seed sources that these birds eat. Peanuts are a great food to put in your feeding station because they're high in calories, they're high in fat, and they're favorites of many birds such as woodpeckers, jays, nuthatches, and chickadees. Every feeding station should definitely have some. Fats, also known as suets, are a favorite food of insect eating birds such as woodpeckers. You can offer them on your tray in many different forms. Suet cakes, suet nuggets, spreadable suet, or suet cylinders. If you do get a suet cylinder or a suet cake and you are offering it on your tray, it's a good idea to break it up into chunks. Fruit is a favorite of fruit eating birds. Now you can add raisins, orange halves, grape halves, blueberries, it doesn't really matter. Not all areas will have fruit eating birds, but if you do, it's a good idea to try it out for the first month to see if you do. Once you have your tray in place and your five preferred foods, the next step is to put equal parts of each food on the tray together separated of course and to monitor each day which foods are being eaten the most. Once the birds have found your feeder and have been eating off of it for about three to four weeks you should have a good idea of what their preferences are. If you're finding that the peanuts are still there at the end of the day but the sunflower seeds and the millet are gone then that's a pretty good idea that maybe the birds in your neighborhood don't prefer the peanuts as much. Or maybe the peanuts are gone and the sunflowers are gone but they're not eating the millet. It's going to vary depending on your neighborhood and the birds you have but this is the best way to find out what birds in your neighborhood do prefer. If you're not quite sure about the tray method, and you're wondering if there's some easier method, there definitely is, but it depends on the stores you have in your area and whether you can get your hands on the products. These products are seed cylinders. So the seed cylinders look like this. Right here I have a nutty for nuts one, so this one's packed with nuts. This one's a naturally nut suet, so this is your suet cake. You've got your nut cake and you've got your bug nuts and berries. So this has sunflower seeds in it, this has bugs in it, it's got peanuts. This one has all different types of tree nuts and this one has suet. Now you take all of these foods and these have all the test foods built into them and you can hang them easily with a feeder like this. So depending on the stores you have in your neighborhood. This is stuff is from Wild Birds Unlimited. You know, if you live in North America, there's a good chance there's one near you or one that can ship to you. And that is definitely by far the easiest way to set up your food stations. You set up the individual cakes and then you monitor over the month which cakes the birds prefer. And this is gonna give you a really good idea of what the birds in your neighborhood prefer. So those are the two methods, your tray method and your seed cylinder method. 
doing this for three to four weeks will definitely teach you the birds preferences in your neighborhood and this is going to go a long way into making thoughtful decisions when you're buying seed blends for your birds in your backyard the worst thing is wasting money on food that the birds in your yard don't eat and it's it's a hassle it's a messy it attracts rodents and you don't want any of that you want foods that the birds in your yard are going to eat and preferably no mess options it's helpful over the testing period to take notes of the types of birds you're seeing in your yard and the foods that they prefer. This will help you later on when you decide the types of birds you want to attract to your yard and the foods that they prefer. Overall, this is gonna make you a more knowledgeable bird feeder than the average person, and it's going to lead to more joy for you. Once you've found out what the birds in your neighborhood prefer, the next step is to just keep offering them those foods. You can go out and get any type of feeder that you prefer, and it's a good idea to do some research on the type of feeder that you choose for the type of birds you want to attract. For example, you don't want to get a small hanging tube feeder if you're looking to attract cardinals. If you're looking to attract cardinals and bigger birds like that, it's probably a better idea to get a hopper or something bigger that they can jump on, or even just stick with the tray. This is totally up to you and we'll be doing some videos on picking the right feeder down the road. Thank you for watching this video and I hope it was helpful in your bird feeding journey. Please like and subscribe and feel free to leave any comments that you wish. Happy bird feeding everyone.